everyone. I am Prophet Charlene Denise Hope, along with Bishop Hope tonight. We want to welcome you to our Tuesday night Bible study live, walking through the Word of God. And today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And I am so glad to be in this day. Thank you, Jesus. God is just so good and he is worthy to be praised. I'm going to pray, get out the way so God can have his way. Father, in the night, Father, tonight we ask you in the name of Jesus, God, to bless those that are um, watching, God. We pray, God, that they will be able to take something that they can meditate on for the rest of the week. God, bless them, bless their family. God, we just thank you for this day. God, we thank you, God, for being our bread of life. God, we thank you for being um, good to us. God, we just thank you for our going out and coming in. God, we just thank you for this day, God. Bless all those that are watching, God, and we pray, God, that something will be said to help them, God, to just to, to grasp and to get through this week. This we ask in no other name but your precious only begotten Son, Jesus' name. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory, God, because you are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. We love you with all our heart and all our soul. Just want to say to all of y'all, New Hope, how y'all doing? Welcome tonight. And just let go and let God, and God, I just hope God, I, I thank God because he's given us new hope every day that we wake up. I, I just thank him for his blessings. I thank him for just pouring out his spirit upon us, and I just thank him for this day, and I just thank him to be amongst the living and not the dead. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all ought to just rejoice and be glad in it. How you doing tonight, Bishop? I'm doing fantissimo, fantastic. Woo! This is the day the Lord has made, yes, and we're is. going to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study, and we are so elated that you have joined us tonight and looking forward to a mm. fruitful discussion in the Word oh, God. as we have a casual conversation as always mm. and hear what the Lord has to say to us tonight. Amen. We Amen. are excited to always. be here. Tonight, as always. Always. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, take about 30 seconds and go ahead and share this broadcast with all of your family, your friends, your neighbors, and let them know we're getting ready to dig deep into the Word of God as we hear Amen. what God has to say tonight. All right? Yeah. All right, take about 30 seconds, hit that share button.
right, let's get started. Amen. Prophets, I'm excited. How about you? I'm always excited to be just here, being alive, being in the midst of what God is doing. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited and I'm hopeful that better days are coming and that's it. Greater is on the horizon and we know it because the word of God said it. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you again tonight for our being present, having this moment to share and to study your word. As always, we pray that you would give us an ear to hear, give us a heart to receive, and give us a mind to do those things that are pleasing in Amen. your sight. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Listen, we are, we are back from a short road trip uh -huh. we took this past weekend. <laughs> we, uh, matter of fact, we covered some road. We went to Atlanta. We went to Alabama. We went to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and all the way back home, got home uh, late last night. So we had a wonderful three-and-a-half-day trip, and God has, uh, has blessed us, enriched mm. us, has renewed us. <laughs> mm. We got some rest, and we got some uh, restoration in the process. So we thank God for that in Jesus' name. Listen, we want to thank God for our daughter, Chantel. Oh my God. On this past Sunday, she gave the message at the Hope, and that girl was off the chain. I'm yeah. telling you, I'm so proud of my daughter, Chantel. Uh, she is a word person yes, and uh, a part excellent preacher, teacher, and we thank God for her word on Sunday. Uh -huh. um, and, and all the things she said on Sunday, one thing jumped out like a sore thumb. Uh, she said that we got to learn how to get out of our own way. And I, I, when she said that word on Sunday, man, I almost leaped out of my chair when I was in the hotel room there looking at the a broadcast. And sometimes our biggest problem is we get in our own way. And if we can ever get out of our own way, mm -hmm. then God. we know that God yeah. can have get his way. way. Get in Amen. So, Prophet, what did you take from that message on Sunday? It was so much Chantel said. I, I, I don't know. She just said so many other things. Um, one of the things, I, I know she said, um, she said we need to think outside of the box. You know, like, I, I, I like that because so, so, sometimes we be so boxed in and we can never think outside the, beyond our, she say our current situations and our circumstances. She say focus on um, your future filled with hope. And she said that was in Jeremiah 29, I 11. Think it, 11. 11. Report. Uh, and then she said something about, I know when she said when I was, um, she was young, she used to think just being a Christian meant you had to um, be meek, uh, mild, and, and do a lot. You don't remember that? I remember it. She said, I love, and then she just said, like, um, I think she, she said, now I can open my mouth boldly and speak um, things said that the Lord concerning me. And that's what we got to do. We got to speak what God says about us. Speak things, be positive, be bold, and speak what the Word of God says. She said you got to begin to decree and declare. Well, she was writing to our message in the part three of our journey this year as we talked about, you know, pursuing uh, the promise of hope, pursuing the promise. And one way that we pursue that promise is that we got to prophesy, you mm -hmm. know, profess and prophesy. Yes over the promise. Yes. And when you discover a promise in the Word, when you discover, when you find a God said in the Word of God, something that God has said, then you can prophesy that, you can profess it, you can confess it, because you know it's going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's the value of relying on what God has said. You can rely on what God has said because His Word as we've learned so much in the past, his word never returns void, but it always accomplished every purpose for which he have sent it. Mm -hmm. So as we are pursuing the promise, amen, in part three, as we are pursuing the promise, we know that we got to go after God with everything in us, everything in us, our mind, our body, our soul, mm -hmm. our strength. We got to go after God with everything we got because we know that if we go after God, God is going out, coming after us as Amen. well. Amen. And he will meet us at the point of our need. Right where we at. 
And then she said, um, I think she said, um, too, she said she was, um, on some of the things she said, you got to see the enemy. She said he always trying to trip you up. He's constantly looking around trying to um, plot and plan for your downfall. Matter of fact, um, they are digging ditches for you right now. They are like um, little ants traveling. She talked about the little ants sometimes. But none of those things matter. She said, you know why? Because you have um, to insecticide, something like that. That's stronger than the rage. She said the termites and something like that and the orchid and like that. And she was saying one thing about, I remember she said something about her kitchen. And she said, well, what she thing, said was that the word of God is like rage. Yeah, like and, rage. And, 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 and it's stronger than, because the word of God will cause your enemy to mm -hmm. back up and leave you alone. Right. So we want to be able to, uh, to, to, to prophesy over our moment mm -hmm. and to make sure that we are ready to do and achieve what God has purpose and plan for our life. Amen. So in this season that we're in, we're in the third season now. We, we, we've talked about all of the good things, how to pursue our hope, uh, promise of hope, and now we're pursuing that promise, and now we're in the area that we got to prophesy right. over the promise. Yes, so is. as we prophesy, we are speaking with confidence. Mm -hmm. We are speaking with assurance. We are not wondering. We are not doubting. We are believing God for what God has said. We are believing. We're trusting God for what God has said concerning our situations, our circumstances, and our, and our conditions. And that's what we got to do. We cannot be caught up in the rhetoric of the day or with the naysayers' comments or commentaries. We have got to rely on what God has already released mm -hmm. for our life. He said, I know the plans I think for you, said the Lord. These are plans to prosper you, plans for your good and not for your disaster. So we know what God has said concerning our future. He said it will be a future be filled with hope. So since God has filled it with hope, now we need to prophesy over that because we know that greater is coming. Exactly. And you got to, um, you, you prophesy into your um, future, and that's how you activate the power of God in your life, you know, by speaking the word of God. And like that, and I, I just also, she also said, Bishop, some of the things that you have been going over in, in, in this um, year about how we secure our hope by embracing prayer, praise, and the pursuit, sustaining our hope by recognizing God's plan and purpose and power. She said we got to share our hope. We got to re reinforce our faith. She said we got to reestablish our focus, and then she said we got to reaffirm our future. Yeah. All of those things are needed and necessary in order for us to obtain that which God has already promised for us, you see. And therefore, what we have learned in the first six months of this year, we can't allow that to escape our ear gate or to escape, to escape our hearts. Because his word, we got to hide in our hearts. That word you got to hide in your heart so that you can gravitate on and meditate on it both day and night. You know, line upon line, precept upon precept. So that you can begin to fulfill that uh, that promise. You can begin to fulfill the hope that God has given you. Now, hope that is is seen is not hope. You know, hope that you have, you are currently tasting that's not hope. Anybody can do that. But that which eyes have not seen, nor nor ears heard, mm -hmm. nor yet entered into the hearts of men, those are the things that drives us. Now, prophet, as you said um, weeks ago about, the goal. about hope. Hope is the what? I said the goal setter. What did I say? Yes. The goal setter. You got to set. That's the, the finish line. Hope is the goal setter. Yeah. Hope is the goal setter. Hope is what is what we are ascribing for. Mm -hmm. But faith is the fuel. Hope is the goal setter. That's the target. But our faith is the fuel mm -hmm. that get us to where hope is. You see, it, it gets us to where God wants us to be. So, you know, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. So we know that God has given us a future that's out there, haven't arrived yet, that is filled with hope. And now our job is to release our faith mm -hmm. in every situation, in every circumstance, in every moment. We release our faith so that we can attain our hope. Mm -hmm. These are precious promises that God has guaranteed in right. his word. And therefore, we got to pursue that. We pursue that in spite of our present pressures. 
We pursue it in spite of our prevailing pain. We pursue it in spite of pressing problems. Yeah. And all of us, you know, would go through some situations in life, highs and lows, good and bad, you know, things that we can and things that we cannot right. control. Okay. So that's life. Life, right. life is going to be, a, a, you know, a pressure mm -hmm. cooker sometimes. Life is going to be painful sometimes. Amen. And life is going to be filled with problems. Right. But we serve a God who, who, who can supply every one of our needs. And, he, and he's a problem solver. I also, I, when I said that thing, I think I remember now, hope is a goal setter. I say hope sets the goal, but faith goes and gets the thing that is hoped for. Yeah. It's the few. Yeah, it's the few. It goes get that, it. That I mean, it, go, it goes and get it. Because Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is. That's the action verb. Is is an action verb. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped mm -hmm. for and the evidence, the proof of things not yet seen. So even though we don't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Even though we haven't yet reached it, doesn't mean that God hasn't placed it there. We know it's there. We know it's there because God said it's there. And therefore, we got to get there. Mm -hmm. And how we get there is by releasing our faith and depending and trusting mm -hmm. On God yes. and in His Word, yes. in spite of, pre of present pressures, in spite of prevailing pain, and in spite of pressing problems that we all have to deal with from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's life. I mean, if life was that easy, mm -hmm. boy, we, we'd be on a flowery bed. But, you know, life is meeting the moment, yeah. handling the challenges, yeah, going through the rough and tough times of life. And coming out smelling like a rose. Yes. Yeah. That, that's what God will do for you. He, he'll take you through something, you know, take you to it take, and, take, and, and bring you through it. And when you come out, you have a testimony, mm -hmm. you know, like they sang this song, I don't look like what I've been through. Mm -hmm. You don't because God brought you through it. Mm -hmm. And if God is bringing you through it, that means he's walking you through it. With, he's walking through it with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said he would never leave us. Right. Nor will he forsake us, but he'll be with us. When, whatever that you're going through, God is with you because he's not going to leave you out there by yourself. Some folks will leave you by yourself, but God is in that with you. And I'm telling you, and that hope, hope. when I say that hope sets that goal, that's the first thing hope does. And the second, hope will keep you alive because you, you know that, don't that's you? That's right. It, it, keep, keep it keeps you motivated. Yeah, keep you going. Yeah, it keeps it's you motivated. A few. It's, it's some, you, have, you always have something to look forward to. You always have something to look forward to. Now, the Lord knew that we would have to be properly motivated and equipped, you know, to handle the unexpected in our days. So what does he do? Every day, here's, here's another thing you got to remember this, every day he pours out fresh new mercies. Every day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. So God blesses us early in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's something about meeting God early in the morning while he is pouring out blessings Amen. so that we can be able to handle the unexpected in our day. If we get properly fueled and properly motivated in the morning, do our morning worship, morning prayer, morning praise, that's early, you see, seek me early while I might be found, mm -hmm. then we would be properly prepared, equipped, to handle the unexpected that may show up in our day. And therefore, that's why we pursue God. Mm -hmm. That's why we go after There's Him. There's something about just getting in the presence of the Lord, getting in the company where God is, in that place. I'd rather be in that place, I think, and um, in, in, in just that place. I think Tasha Cobb sings that song. One um, place. Just, uh, yeah. In the tabernacle. In his tabernacle. It, it, me, it's just me and Him, just in that place. And, and that's how it was. We was on that road trip on yesterday. And we were coming back, and I just told you to put some worship in there and begin to worship God on that. Just, Lord, keep us alert on the highway because we end up getting on, on the highway, and there was a crash where uh, something happened up the road, and the, the car's about five miles. I don't know how long, but we was in a standstill um, on, 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 oh, my God. To about two hours, yeah, two and a half hours. Yeah, to about three hours, it felt like. But God was with us. And I just, I thank God, but we was in that place with the Lord and praising God and asking God, even before we got on the highway to protect us, we pleaded the blood 
over the vehicle, over us, and God cover us. And when we get in that place early in the morning and we seek him and about God, what is it your will for us for this day? God, I want your will to be done in my life. And that's that's what I, I, I like. And we got to get more there, all of us, so, in that place. So now we have shifted. Now we have shifted. I said on uh, before, how, how will you know when your life and your prayer have shifted? You would know when your life and prayer have shifted when you can start prophesying over your situation, mm -hmm. when you can start speaking with assurance, you know, speaking with assurance and confidence based on what God has mm -hmm. said. And that's what the word prophesy means. It means to predict with assurance mm -hmm. on the basis of godly information. You know, you make an inspired declaration of what is to come. You see, you begin to speak positive things. Mm -hmm. God, you said. Yeah, you begin to speak things even when it don't look good, mm -hmm. even when it don't feel good, mm -hmm. even when it don't sound good. Yeah. You see, even when you got, you know, bad information, you, you, you begin to speak positive things in the atmosphere. You decree it, you release it in the atmosphere and allow the Holy Spirit to take over, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and here's what, what happens. You are not just saying, based upon your emotions, you are speaking the word of God, the factual word of God. God, your word said that by your stripes I am healed. So even when you're hurting, you're speaking healing. Mm -hmm. God, your word said you sent your word in Psalms 107 verse 20. You sent your word and you healed them mm -hmm. and you delivered them from their destruction. That's me, God. Mm -hmm. So you begin to find where you are. You find out where you are in life situation, in life journey. And therefore, whatever challenges you are going through, you find you a God said concerning your situation, your condition, your, 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 your God, God, God. And you speak yeah, yeah. that well, until God, God begins to release you. Say, God, you said I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. God, you said uh, my, your grace is sufficient. God, you said uh, be still. And, and know that I'm the Lord. God, God, you said um, with all things, God, it, it, it's possible with, with, with that. God, you said um, you should, you, uh, uh, we, we should have whatever we ask or think. God, you said, and I'm standing on what you said. God, you said you will make my enemies be my at my footstool. God, you said, and I'm standing on what you said. God, you said, you, you, you know your plans, that you have prospered for me, not to harm me, to give me a future and a hope. And I'm standing on what you said, and you just... Begin to just say what God said. Sometimes, like, I don't know what he said. Open up the book. Open up his word and just begin to say, or, or find you, you a you, word. You'll you find a word. It's in if there. You, if you dig deep enough, you'll find Yeah, it's right you, there. You'll find a word but that, you that will meet open. you at the point of your And need. meditate is right there. Like, what, what he said. It's in the word. It's in the Bible. It's and in the book. And rather than complaining, you can start celebrating. Celebrating. Celebrating the victory. Because you don't have to wait until victory shows up. You can shout before time. Right. You can shout in advance. Because why? Because you know that God is going to turn it around for your good. Mm -hmm. He's going to work in your favor. And you speak hope into your future. Yeah, and you begin to know, you feel it in your soul, yeah. that greater is on the way. Greater mm -hmm. is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. That hope, you know, is, is looking for you. As you're looking for hope, guess what? Hope is looking for you. As, you, as you're looking for victory, guess what? Victory is looking for you. It's mine. As you're looking for healing, guess what? Healing is looking for you. The very thing you are pursuing is pursuing you. Why? Because you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. You're a child of God. And God has already released. That's why we can rely. I said this on a couple of uh, 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 Bible says ago. We can now rely on what God has released. Mm -hmm. We can now rely. On what God has released. That's that's the word of God. Yeah. You see, when I think about that prophet, I think about the three Hebrew boys. This is a good example. Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego knew what God promised, knew what God can do. So when King Nebuchadnezzar had commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter, right? And when and, and when they threw the boys in the fire, prior to going in, here were their testimony. They said to the king, they said, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. Because the God that we serve, guess what? He's able. He 
He's able to deliver us from this furnace and from your hands, O king. And then they said this, and even if he don't, even if he does not do it, he is still able. What a testimony. You see, when you can trust God like that, God, I know you can move. I know what your words say. But even if you don't move, God, I'm going to be satisfied anyway. Because you know what God can do. The reason why you know it because you spend time with him. Oh, my you, God. You, you there spend we go. time with there him. There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm in his company. Stay right I'm, there. I'm, I'm his presence. Stay right there. Go ahead. You, you, no, I, I, I spend quality time with him. I, 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 I study the word of God. I, 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 I don't forsake the assemblies of my brother, and I so, want to get in the world. So are, the word so are, you, are you saying, prophets, that there is a benefit for spending time with God? Of, of course there is a benefit when you spend time <laughs> with God. When you spend them, the more you do something, the more you, it's like a, a, a athlete. When they, they, they perfect their, their craft or they spend a lot of the, the great athletes, the outstanding ones, the, the ones, you know, they, they, God kind of put super on our natural, more more on us. I mean, he put more in us because when you, you spend more time, you get better at the thing. You perfect it. You master it. And that's the thing. You got to get in the presence of God. We got to get out of our own way like Chantel's um, our way and let God get in the way and have his way. But that's where, I'm, that's where I was going. Because you see, what happens is we mess up sometimes our own blessings. Or we hold up sometimes our own blessings. Our own blessings don't show up when it should show up because we get too much in the way of it. We get in the way. So if we get in God's presence and we get out of the way, like Jesus said, watch this, like Jesus said, he said, Father, not my will, but thine will be done. Remember that prayer he prayed? In the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. he was going to Calvary to face death on the cross. But he prayed in the Garden called Gethsemane. Yes. He was so challenged, so motivated to pray until sweat like blood fell from his face. And the Bible said he had three people he took. That was Peter, James, and John. He said, I want you guys to just watch with me. You got to pray. Just watch. And they went to sleep. But in Jesus' prayer, he's, he got out of his way. Mm -hmm. In his own way, he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. That, that means he didn't want to go through it. But then he said, nevertheless, that's what the point. He said, nevertheless, not what I want, not my will, but thy will. But thine will be done. When you read the word of God, here we go, saints. When you read the word of God and you discover a God said for your situation, for your circumstance, for your condition, what you ought to do at that point is say, Father, not my will, but, thy will. but thine will be done. What, what's the will of God? The will of God is whatever God, whatever God wants. Mm -hmm. So when you discover what God's will is, what God's word says, that's what he wants. That's when you get out of the way. Get out of your own way so God can have his way. But that goes back to your scripture, um, Jeremiah. 29 I, what would God want? He said, I know. God know what he wants for me. I know the plan, the thought the I, plans have I have for you. you, says the Lord, to do. Plans what? of peace and not of evil. To give you. To give you a future and you know, a hope. I, I, God already know what he has planned for us. So how you, you, we don't know better than what God has for us. So we got to allow God to be God. Can't nobody be God being God. Wait a minute now. You, God, God don't know what I'm going through. God, God created you. No, God, you know, look, God got too many people to call mm -hmm. on. He got too many house calls to make. He is not concerned about you. He's, he's concerned about you. I mean, about you. How do you God, know that? Because God say, I, he, he, I know the plans. I know the thoughts I have you. I got you. I had you with purpose in your mind when I created. When you got in your mother's womb, I had something already for you. You weren't just created. And, and, and made just to, to come here, and I didn't have something planned for you. I plan to give you a plan, a future, and a hope that you can hope for some things, and it's gonna come into fruition. It's gonna come to pass. I already done plan. I didn't plan for you to fail. I didn't plan for you to be well, just on I, the street. I, I love that because now here we go. You see, I know that when you discover what your gifts and talents are, now you pursue it. 
to perfect it. You pursue it to perfect it. That's going back to your athletic example. Because when a person knows that they have a calling on their life, whether it's to play football, basketball, mm -hmm. or to be a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, or a politician, or a preacher, once you know what your calling is, now you ought to pursue it with everything in you so that you can master your craft. You can master your craft mm -hmm. so that you can take advantage of the opportunity when the moment shows up. So now, as you're pursuing your craft, you're pursuing your purpose, God is perfecting your passion. Mm. God is perfecting your passion. You see, your, your pursuit for the promise will become your passion. Mm. That's your passion. You're pursuing what you are so passionate about. You know, you're going after what you are so passionate about. Yeah, it's in your, it's in your it's gut. In it's there. in your spirit. And you're not going to be satisfied until you master Sometimes we, that craft. We think that we just, that, that just happened. Uh-uh, God placed that in us or somebody that was close to us. That, that spoke something or they've done something or you watch them and they put something in you that's different that you can do it. You can, I, I, I can't touch that like you because God has placed that in there. There's anointing on your life and he put that in there and all you got to do is work it. The more you work it, the more you, you, you master it. Well, you see, we, we're getting ahead of ourselves, <laughs> you know, because here, here's, here's where we say, here's what it really happened because, because, what you want from God, listen, is going to be your anointing. Mm -hmm. your, your passion will turn into your God's anointing because you will discover what God really wants for you, the plans. And that means his plans is filled with anointings yes. and giftings mm -hmm. so that, you know, the anointing and the giftings of God are giving without repentance. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you really understand what you're pursuing, then you understand it's pursuing you. His plan is to prosper me, not to harm me. Wow. To give me hope and a future. Wow. wow. Hope and a future. Wow. Me. Jeremiah 29 11. He says with the NET and the NLT, I know the plans that I plan for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to uh, give you a future Thank you, that is filled with hope. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Me? These are plans for your good and not for your disaster. These plans will give you a future. And guess what? That is filled with, with hope. And then Chantel said on yesterday, she said, you got to repeat that. She said, prophesy those things that not as they are. She said, eyes have not seen, there we go. nor ears have heard. That you God see, has you, you, when you get to this moment in your in your journey, you can't allow the naysayers to discredit or to devalue the anointing that God has placed in your life. Mm. You can't let nobody discredit it or nobody devalue what God has placed in you because God has planned it and God has placed purpose in you. God has planned it and God has put purpose in you. And that purpose becomes your passion now. Mm -hmm. And because it's in you with passion, and you're passionate about it, you are going after it. That's pursuit. Mm -hmm. You are going after it now with everything in you. And this is what God does. Because you're, because you're going after it, he put people in your path yes. along the way mm -hmm. to bless you, to pour yes. into you, yes. you know, to encourage you. And that's what happens. That's what happens. When you get into your right God got some God got some folk in place already. Don't need to know their names. Mm -mm. But when you get to that intersection of benefit and blessing, doors fly wide open. Things start happening. Things start turning you around. Get in that place where God is. Things, Things start will. working for your uh -huh. benefit. Whenever you get in Things that. start turning mm -hmm. in your favor. Mm -hmm. So don't let nobody discredit mm -hmm. what God discredit mm -hmm. or devalue what you you go and, uh, and and be what God wants us to be and to do what God wants us to do. Mm. 
Now, every now and then I see the video may be going out because they're having some difficulties here with the internet. But uh, the meat of the matter is the devil don't want this word to get out. <laughs> so we're going to rehearse it one more time. When you go after what God has purposed and placed and planned for you, it becomes your passion. You pursue it. You pursue it with everything in you. Go after it. Master it. Perfect it. Practice it. Perform it. You know, if it's not right, get up and do it again. Because there is, there is a blessing in the pursuit. And go after God. Go Pur after God. Pursue God with all your heart, with all that's within you. Pursue him. Go after him. Seek him. Cry out to him. Pant for him like a deer panted for the water. Go after the creator. Go after God because he know what he has planned for. Sometimes we're going after everybody else, everything else. Go after him. He know what he has placed in you for such a time as this, for you to go forward, for you to prosper, for you not to fail. Go after him. This it's is, in him this that is, we move and have our being. This is your, this is your moment. This is your time. This is just for you. And listen, God has something in store. God has something marvelously planned just for you. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Okay. And neither has it yet entered into the hearts of men all of the good things that God has in store for them that love him. And for those who are called according, according to, and what to his God purpose. is doing, he's stirring that up, what he has placed in you, stirring it up, mixing it up. The more you mix it up, the better it tastes. It just get all in there, get all through you. You know that you know that you know. You stand on it. You speak to your, um, you speak hope. You speak to your future. You speak to your situation. Speak to your circumstance. Speak to your condition. Speak, speak it out, God. I'm blessed. I'm. I'm the head, I'm not the tail, I'm above, I'm not the knee. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. God, you've given me the strength to be able to stand through whatever I got to go through, God. You're with me. You're never going to leave me. You're never going to forsake me. I got the victory in this, God. I believe your word. I can have what you said. I can do what you say I can do. And I can be what you say I can be. God, we thank you tonight for your word, God. We, 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 we prophesy in God. To those that are sick, God, we speak to their illness right now. In the name of Jesus, by their, your stripes, God, they are healed, God. We speak to their marriage, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak to those that one that just try to come in, try to tear it down, God. Um, um Jezebel, uh, whoever he is, uh, we speak to it right now, God. Have your way right now, God. We're going after you with all of our, our, our what's in us, God, that you have placed in us, God. Just have your way. We speak to our circumstance. We thank you tonight. God bless each and every one of you. And on in the morning, there is breakthrough prayer. We welcome you to join us. We've been in this almost like three years. God is doing a new thing, and there is power in prayer. So you are welcome to come in and chime in. Let go and let God. We love you tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Bless your family. Bless you. Bless you in your body. Bless you in your mind. Bless you as you go out. Bless you as you come in. Amen. We love you, New Hope. We love all of you all. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Yes. have for me.